If you protect this one rhythm, there is no new music. Nothing. No new reggae, because all these other reggae artists can sue every single other artist, and then one person holds the copyright, and then there's no more new music. So all you guys in the comments, I see what you're saying, but it's not true. So we're back again, part four, dancehall versus reggaeton. So now the ruling is then, this is going to court. All the reggaeton artists try to dismiss this, but the judge wasn't having it. So now we are going to court very soon. So let's break this down. What are the facts and what can we look forward to seeing? First off, Steely and Clevy's lawyers are claiming that reggaeton is built on allegedly copying or sampling the drum loop from Fish Market. That's one. But as I've stated before in many videos, a simple drum loop does not meet the threshold for copyright protection. Two, Statute of Limitations. Now, this song was created in 1989. It is 2024, guys. This is a staggering 35 years later. Many careers, genres, and music outside of reggaeton has been built upon this simple drum loop. And let me tell you, it has evolved way past what Fish Market is. But this delay highly favors reggaeton artists in this case. Three, public domain and common use. When a music element becomes a defining factor of a genre, it enters public domain as a scene affair. This renders it unprotectable under copyright law. And let me tell you, the Dembo rhythm has evolved and transformed way past what Fish Market was. And this has been over decades. So now the rhythm is considered common music language as opposed to proprietary creation. Four, derivative works and transformative use. Even if the judge decides that Fish Market is protectable, the reggaeton artists have adapted it in ways that constitute a transformative use. So let's break that down. The adaptions, the variations, and the creative modifications applied to this rhythm constitute a new work. According to copyright law, transformative use supports the notion that art builds upon previous works to create something new. This is how music evolves in every single genre. It's how we got jazz, it's how we got blues, it's how we got rock and roll. R&B, hip hop, all of it, all of it, guys. There's, if you protect this one rhythm, there is no new music, nothing. No new reggae, because all these other reggae artists can sue every single other artist, and then one person holds the copyright, and then there's no more new music. So all you guys in the comments, I see what you're saying, but it's not true. Five, questionable motives. Now the judge is allowing this, but it still seems weird that the Planktons only copyrighted the rhythm after they filed this lawsuit. I mean, you had from 1989 to 2024 to do it. Like this clearly undermines their position, their motives, and their intention with suing over a hundred different artists and over a thousand different songs. This clearly looks like a cash grab instead of protecting your art. As an artist, I clearly respect the right to protect your intellectual property. Like that's truly important to me and tons of other artists out there clearly. But if we're looking at the laws that are in place and protecting creative arts, Fish Market, the drum loop does not fall under that. That simple rhythm that's been built upon, adapted and transformed has become a public domain element under widespread use. I mean, over a hundred artists that are mainstream over a thousand songs that have been popular, it truly doesn't align with the intentions of this case. So with that being said, we're gonna leave it to the judge and the lawyers and see how this goes out. 